isn't the Supreme Court just saying that these decisions, as you've said, should be made by government, not by agencies? It's that simple, isn't it? Absolutely. Congress needs to step up. And that's with every decision that they have been avoiding for a long time. They've passed it off to the courts and then stomped their feet when they thought the courts didn't get it right. They're passing it off to these agencies. Congress needs to step up and do its job. Uh, Peggy, there's a general rule. And I, when I was working for a prime minister, you were working for a president, that basically domestic policy stayed domestic. Now, in Madrid, President Biden has slammed the Supreme Court of America bringing relations, of course, between the federal government and the nation's highest court to the lowest point. But he said, the one thing that's been destabilizing is the outrageous behavior of the Supreme Court of the United States in overruling not only Roe v. Wade, but essentially challenging the right to privacy. Now, how does this go down with an American president overseas criticizing his own Supreme Court? Well, he would be all in favor of the Supreme Court if the Supreme Court was ruling in the ways that he wanted. But because the Supreme Court is looking at the Constitution and doing what they've been called to do, and he's getting heat from his party, he, of course, is going to turn around and call them out. We should all be in favor of a fair and just Supreme Court that is abiding by the Constitution as it was written. And this yep. is a very constitutionalist court now. It's not an activist court. And so Joe Biden is not in favor of that because he's getting getting heat from the far left who are telling him that he's not doing enough to control this court, but he shouldn't control the court. That's why we have a division of powers and separation of government. Brilliant. Brilliant. Just on this Environmental Protection Agency, uh, which the Supreme Court have denied them the power to force power plants to cut their emissions. Can I get a comment from you on this, that the president of the United States in Madrid has said, and I quote his words, the science confirms what we all see with our own eyes. The wildfires, droughts, extreme heat and intense storms are endangering our lives and livelihoods. Peggy, there's plenty of scientific argument that disagrees with all this stuff. Well, the Biden administration is not grounded in truth and fact and science. We know that they will say anything to just make the problem hopefully go away. It's actually the opposite. We know that failed energy policies have created many of these problems. And you look no further than my own home state of California, where energy poverty has created blackouts, yes. it's created wildfires. Yep. And so it's bad energy policy. We should not be in a space, a space of energy poverty. We have the capacity to have energy Same abundance, us. but we Same need to do us. it smartly. Same as us. Engaging nuclear power, renewables will never fully power our major Absolute. cities, and 100%. they know it. Same as us. Same as us. Just on voting, Peggy, it is true, isn't it, that you've got to identify yourself in America when you vote, but there are different forms of identification. So what chance of success of the Missouri governor, who signed a wide-ranging elections bill, that will require voters to present government issued photo identification to cast a ballot. Is that likely to get through? Well, we will see, and it probably will go through in Missouri, but it's interesting because the Biden administration is very much opposed to the thoughts of the American people on this. Even the African-American community overall is in favor of voter ID. You need a, you need an ID to fly on an airplane. You need an ID to buy alcohol. You need an ID to cash a check. This is something that people can't exist really in society these days without some form of identification. It doesn't need to be a driver's license. It can be a state-issued ID. ID. It can be made free and available, but anybody who wants to vote should at least take that one step and be sure that our elections are free and fair, safe and secure. That's what the American people want. They want our elections to make it easy to vote, but hard to cheat. And this will take at least one step in that direction. How amazing, isn't it? We've got exactly the same problem here. Uh, the left are opposed to ID of any kind, of any kind, when they vote. And as you say, make it easier to vote and harder to cheat. Great insights, Peggy. Always lovely to talk to you. Keep well, and we'll talk to you again next week.